I know it might be hard to think of winter right now, but the release for Winter 24 have just dropped, and you know what that means. Yes, it's time to start preparing for the next Salesforce release. In this video, we'll go over my top 10 features from this release for Salesforce admins so that you know what you need to look forward to. Let's get into it. As promised at Dreamforce 22, Salesforce has extended dynamic forms to support hundreds of standard objects. Specifically, support has been extended to the majority of Lightning Web Component enabled standard objects. Dynamic forms are not available on objects that do not support Lightning Web Components, including things like campaigns, tasks, and products. To ascertain if an object supports dynamic forms, simply edit the record page on the Lightning App Builder. If you see the Fields tab in the Component panel, then dynamic forms are available. Dynamic forms will also be generally available for mobile from the Winter 24 release. You'll need to enable this feature from the Salesforce mobile app setup. Historically, when the owner of an important dashboard left the company, you had the hassle of cloning and recreating the dashboard. But from winter 24, you can transfer ownership of a dashboard and the new owner has complete control, including the ability to edit the existing dashboard. Now to transfer a dashboard, you must have view all data or view my team's dashboard permission. You'll also need edit or manage access to the folder where the dashboard resides. If even the thought of creating report summary formulas makes you apprehensive, then you're not alone. Summary formulas are an advanced reporting feature and can be really tricky. You can now use the preview image marked as number one in the image shown as a reference to better understand how your formula will be used in the live report. Next, I can announce that mass quick actions on related lists will become generally available from winter 24. Supercharge your related lists and delight your users by streamlining the actions available and adding quick actions directly to related lists. These changes mean that your users can create related records for items in the list without leaving the page, as well as perform mass updates for up to 100 records. In at number five, we have a record number of updates to permission in this release. With the impending retirement of permissions on profiles, it's really important to stay up to date on the latest permission changes. You can now create a custom report type using permission set assignment as the primary object. Using this report, you can view all users assigned to a custom permission set or permission set group. See what's enabled in a permission set more easily is in beta. This change improves visibility when viewing a permission set by displaying all enabled objects, user and field permissions on a single page. Simply select a permission set and choose view summary beta as the name suggests this feature is currently in beta. To more easily troubleshoot permission set group errors, the most recent actionable error message is now displayed on the detail page. You can also manually trigger a recalculation. Previously, you had to edit the permission set group to trigger that recalculation. The object API name and field API name are now displayed in addition to the object and field label to make it much easier to identify objects and fields that may have the same name. You can now also view a count of how many permission set groups a permission set belongs to. And lastly, improved user access policies allow you to declaratively define access for groups of users in a single operation. For example, you could specify a group of users to grant or revoke access to permission set licenses, permission sets and permission set groups, as well as package licenses, queues and groups. This enhancement is in beta. From the Winter 24 release, you can reference a total of three permission sets, permission set groups, or managed package licenses in user access policy filters, making it much easier to locate your intended users. Similarly to permissions, there are quite a number of sharing features that are worth a mention. So let's get stuck in. You can now create a custom report type on the account share object to enable reporting on account access via manual shares and the account team. This update is sure to make managing the security of your accounts that much easier. 
Use the group member report to manage public group membership more easily. You'll first need to create a custom report type selecting group member as the primary object. Once the new custom report type is deployed, you and your users can use it to see which users, roles and other groups have been added to public groups. There are two release updates designed to enable faster account sharing recalculation. To improve performance, Salesforce is changing how account sharing recalculation works behind the scenes, so there's nothing needed on your part. Implicit child share records are no longer stored between accounts and their child case and contact records, and implicit child share records are no longer stored between accounts and their child opportunity records. At number seven, we come to the latest in a long run of forecast enhancements. First up, Salesforce has updated the forecast page to make viewing and understanding the data much simpler. First of all, we've got updated labels to explain what you're viewing. Next, the current period is highlighted in the summary view. We've got some updated icons and highlighting which indicates fields that are clickable. Now the highlighting appears when you hover over the field. In addition to adjustments, managers can now take advantage of manager judgments to exclude opportunities from the forecast based on their insight. The manager judgment column can be added to forecast types based on opportunity, opportunity product, or line item schedule. Manager judgments are not supported for forecast types based on opportunity splits or product splits. With this additional column, managers can select whether an opportunity is in or out. A nice little feature at number eight involves an update to Health Check. Health Check now includes additional settings that enable you to evaluate your experienced cloud site security. Using this new feature, you can see the number of objects that guest user profiles have read or edit access to. Next, you can expect more email productivity features. They're being made available to users in enterprise and professional editions with Sales Cloud. Specific features that previously required purchasing an add-on license are now included. This includes the ability to send later, email tracking, text shortcuts, and email engagement. Last but not least, this is my favorite new release feature at number 10, we have a new intelligence view for leads and contacts. Once enabled via setup, lead intelligence view and contact intelligence view display useful activity metrics on the lead and contact tabs. Previously, those tabs only displayed list views. These metrics include the total number of records that meet your filter criteria, records with no completed activities, records with past activity but no completed activities in the last 30 days, records with recently completed activity but no future activity scheduled, records with activities that are overdue, records with activities due today, and records with activities due in the next 30 days. If you've watched any of our top features videos before, you'll know that I can't help but include a bonus. And that bonus today is audit changes on opportunities. Splits on opportunities are often contentious, with different users, teams, and departments wanting to ensure that they get the correct recognition and commission for their contributions. These teams will welcome the audit history for splits and opportunity teams. This change will enable you to see who made changes and when for a more accurate view of changes. Another new feature for orgs dealing with splits is the ability to allow users to view and edit custom fields on opportunity product splits. These custom fields can be used to help users determine split allocations. Don't forget to check out our top Winter 24 features for developers and subscribe to Salesforce Ben to make sure you don't miss out on great content just like this. And that's it. What's your favorite new feature in the Salesforce Winter 24 release? Let us know in the comments.